Okay. And a singular solution of that in mathematically perfected economy, um, including even a prescription for immediately uh, converting any central banking system into mathematically perf perfected economy, even virtually without cost. But for people to understand this proposition, they need to understand the what I've called the obfuscation of the currency. And this is a word that, that w saw no general usage whatsoever uh, before you know I introduced it uh, and uh, as an obfuscation. And now you find people all over the world using this word. In fact, in in monetary uh, and pretended monetary authority, which imitates this thesis and, and, and proof of singular solution, which in every case is very, very poorly done. Um, it's, 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 a, it's amazing what an inordinate extents of my own time are taking up daily now in answering to uh, plagiarists of this, of this concept. But, so we're discussing it at its root and, and we won't devote any more time to, to that unless you know, it, it becomes you know, it, it, it incumbent upon us to do so in regard to some further consideration. But the idea of a promissory obligation is simply this. Um, if if you built a hundred thousand, I'm just explaining this for the sake of the listeners, of course. But suppose you were a, a builder of homes and you'd built a hundred thousand dollar home with a hundred year mm -hmm. li lifespan. Right. Um, and uh, I came along and said, uh, you know, uh, Jason, um, uh, I'd like to own that home, and and you knew me, uh, and you considered. Uh, my integrity to be flawless and that I was a very productive person and and that it was very reasonable to believe that I would pay you over the lifespan of the home. Well this would be the most primitive uh, form of a promissory obligation that is that I, pro I, I promise to pay you over some span of time uh, uh, the, whatever we agreed would be the equivalent of your production in my production. That's right. So this this arrangement would be free of exploitation or any extrinsic manip manipulation or adulteration of our agreement or or, or, or obstruction even of, of, of the possibility that I I I make good on it. So um, the next uh, advancement above that is actually introduced by the banking systems in this ancient ruse which put Christ on the cross and that is that a, 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 a mere publisher of the evidence of our promissory obligation intervenes upon this arrangement. <clears throat> but the natural implementation of this purported advancement and it, it is an advancement in, in regard to uh, the, the the principles of monetization, in insofar only as you, the real creditor who gives up property for this promissory obligation, are paid in full in the outset. In other words, banks don't have to be this intervening pro party, which intervenes strictly for the sake of exploitation. Instead, <clears throat> whenever we do anything collectively that is as government and it particularly under a republic uh which we are uh which is a is representative government well, is well not not, <clears throat> not canada we're not a republic well uh parliament is a representative form of government we've got uh, various names for our system uh, but uh, socialist of welfare state uh, um, constitutional monarchy. <laughs> it's a variety yes, of things. Uh, I, I, would, I would agree with this. That, 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 we got a whole bunch of problems up here. We got the British system and uh, it's not even functioning the way it's meant. We've got a, a governor general who doesn't do his job or her job. It's recently been changed. She, uh, the person in that seat has been changed. Uh, basically, we got a rubber stamp at the top. And uh, we, we still actually have the Queen of Canada. You can go to uh, Wikipedia and you can read all about the Queen of Canada. Uh -huh. So uh, you guys got your independence a few hundred years ago, and uh, we're still looking for ours. Well, in truth, uh, what you're saying um, is is accurate as applied to our country, too. In other words, technically, we are a republic, and, and technically, 
I see parliamentary government as a form of, 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 of a republic as well, which is representative government as distinguished from a democracy. I just, like you've uh, objected rightly to my, uh, my uh, assertion that uh, you're a republic, um, um, uh, I object to the liberal usage misuse of the term democracy. Right. Um, today, you know, none of these countries that are evolving in these revolutions in Af Africa and, and whatnot are, are democracies. And, and our leaders, to their great discredit, are using this word democracy. Yeah, I think that democracy is more of a, um, a term that should be aptly used to describe the method the people use to select the people who sit in representation in a republic, not necessarily the uh, the. Um, the way that the, the government works after the fact, after the democracy has, has voiced its opinion. I would agree with uh, pretty much with that assessment because, um, you know, except that I think that the form of government that you're providing these candidates for uh, itself uh, prescribes and limits how that happens in such ways that I can't say that it's truly democratic either. Um, because uh, I think uh, outside influences affect who may or may not become candidates and even more so affect what uh, of, of those who may become candidates might succeed. You know, money comes into such a strong influence in terms of, uh, you know, who may ascend to power in our country you know, for instance, which is a formal republic for certain. That, that, that's true. And it's terrific that we're doing something like this radio show today because it's giving, um, you know, us the little guys who normally would have absolutely no influence and no chance uh, to penetrate past the, um, to get, to, to be a part of the press, really, as, as they say, you know, there's freedom for the press, well, for everybody who has one. Um, but this is giving us an opportunity to do something. The internet uh, and it is making a difference. I can tell you right now that in the election up here, there's been a number of complaints. We even had the town of Comox was complaining about the number of signs that people have uh, posted. You know, 50 feet down the street, there's another sign. 50 feet down the street, there's another sign. The same signs all over the place. Mm -hmm. And uh, But people are uh, objecting to that mm -hmm. and, and because they're uh, opening their minds a little bit and seeing that, you know, it's not necessarily the guy with the most signs that wins. And, and they're expecting more. The, the, the bar is being raised, and they're asking for more. They're expecting more, and they're understanding more. Yes, and, and, and you know, it's those numbers of signs affect people. <clears throat> it's as if, you know, it's, it's, it's a way that polls are used today. You know, uh, you can ask a question, uh, especially to a selected segment of the population, and the, and the phraseology that you've architected that question can predispose um, you know the uh, sum of answers that you get and the thing about polls then that I object to uh, which is analogous to you know the number of signs that you see down the street if you drive down the street and you see you know uh, 800 signs for candidate X uh, 40 signs for Canada uh, candidate Y and, and 10 signs for Canada, candidate Z, you'd think candidate Z didn't have a chance. And uh, uh, if the debates that uh, led to, you know, the culmination of the election uh, never really addressed the issues, even in the most rudimentary ways, much less in, in conclusive, exhaustive ways, um, by format or whatever. And, of course, you know, when you limit an answer to five minutes or 15 minutes, you know, the, the public, unless they are, the, the lights are totally on, the brain is working really hard, you know, they cannot detect who is the candidate who is going to serve them from these kind of limitations. What, what, what I envision is the only forum for representation is that, that uh, you know, positions on, 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 
on issues are exhaustively declared by each candidate. They declare what they consider to be the universal objects of the populace. They declare what they consider to be the optimal means uh, of achieving those objects. And they even prove that those means will achieve the objects. Now, in, in all cases, if any of those three things can be disproven by a single person, um, I'm advocating means of representation, which I call absolute representation in this you know, world mandate for mathematically perfected economy and absolute consensual representation, which allow invalidations to disqualify candidates. And so the thing is that uh, we deny ourselves representation when we resort to these um, rather uh, amateurish uh, formats that we, we do, which are purposely skewed so that certain people can sound good without ever uh, being held accountable. How do you run for president of the United States in, at the brink of, of, of terminal monetary failure, just claiming that you represent change we can believe in, and never, uh, never uh, uh, offering proof of, of, of solution, much less even proof of cause of, of the problems that we're suffering, which is which, you know, you're stepping across the line to doing, to providing that for the people by running on a platform of mathematically perfected economy, which is these irrefutable arguments of one and one only monetary solution, including a, a, a proof of, of inevitable failure uh, under this obfuscation of the currency that you know that we're explaining so in, in response to your <clears throat> to talking about how the uh, the masses are just uh, or how they're pandering to the masses by simply uh, you know the number of signs or their marketing campaigns or running on a platform of um, <clears throat> oh, we believe or or whatever whatever stupid uh, couple of words they can come up with catchphrases and things like that but Not it's a thin it's, air <clears throat> out of thin air, excuse me, yeah. but they're they're uh, it, it's it may it, it inevitably it it terminates in nothing but a colossal face plant uh, for them. When an independent, for example, up here, I was at uh, an all candidates meeting last night, mm -hmm. and uh, not to uh, get personal, but uh, the it's embarrassing for them. I, I mentioned to uh, the people that are um, listening to me, I noticed that. Uh, well, I said to them, I said, did you notice that they won't touch me? That all the other candidates, except one last night, one of the candidates did mention me in a good light. After I spoke, she said, well, Jason's a tough, act, a tough act to follow. And the reason I'm a tough act to follow isn't because I can speak necessarily. It's because I'm telling the truth. Right. And, uh, and, and we go from, you know, when it comes down the table to me to speak, it's the truth. And then it goes back to the, um, the stupidity of, of their system, which is the old system, which is... Uh, Let's not talk about the truth. Let's not uh, let's not talk about the real issue. Let's talk about um, some fringe issue, or let's talk about something that really doesn't matter. And the people can see that, and that's the most interesting thing about it. That all the people really are lacking, at least in this area, is a little bit of, you know, legitimacy in terms of. Um, uh, I mean, they see that what I'm speaking about is true. That I've got educated people that are working in the mortgage business and uh, bankers and things like that. So, you know, you're, you're bang on, you're exactly right. And they're just lacking a little bit of um, confidence that this is, that I'm going to be there. Uh, this election, next election, uh, if we have another election, you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe two or three or four elections down the road, if we if we still have the ability to do that, if they haven't taken that away from us. Exactly, and 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 there's a great question of that because the, the this is the final curtain for the banking system. They know their days are numbered. And, they do, and and uh, it's it's people who can argue the truth. Uh, before the people and and present the fact of 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 one and one only solution which serves our universal objects which who will eventually prevail on behalf of the people but without people like yourself you know we we will never get there and so this is why it's so important for people to to listen and and to understand all all the issues 
Um, let's finish up that uh, this concept of, of a promissory obligation because, say, uh, let's do it in three stages. We we explain this first primitive form of it where you know I simply promise to pay this hundred thousand dollar house off to you. So I give you something of my production uh, every period of 